Welcome to the second episode about the new exploit system. So, uh, last episode I made a overview about, you know, what, is, what has changed, some basics around the new exploits in the shop, and so on. And so, in this episode I want to build upon that by showing you how to start out uh, in the game now that uh, so much has changed. You will have uh, more trouble getting money, you will have more trouble uh, finishing the missions. So I think it's uh, quite fitting if we start out by uh, trying to get some money and uh, getting established uh, in the Greyhack universe. Uh, last episode I showed you how to put the uh, meta exploit uh, in the lib folder. You need to make sure that you follow those instructions and put the meta exploit in here uh, for the exploits to work. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's start out by going to the browser and uh, checking out the hack shop again. I'll try to give some more information about how these um, Like how the information Relates to the different exploits uh, So it will be easier for you to find exploits that uh, uh, Will work with what you're trying to achieve Since uh, Many of these exploits are situational. Uh, we will uh, try to be extra careful not to buy stuff that we won't use and run out of money. Uh, so we have to be careful with our starting money now and um, prioritize. I would um, suggest uh, you finding some exploit that can help you hack a bank account. Uh, so you can get some uh, initial money and uh, and not get stuck or uh, have a hard time getting started in the game because you run out of money. Uh, there are... Let's uh, go over this uh, in a somewhat structured way. So there are some uh, exploits that I mentioned last time as well which uh, are used uh, for local use and there are some exploits that are used for remote use let's see if i can find one of those so you can see here like local use local use local use here we have one and uh, remote use and so the local use uh, exploits are kind of useless at the moment most of them. There are some exceptions, but most of them are fairly useless. And the reason for that is that uh, in order to uh, access a, uh, any computer, you pretty much need a shell, uh, especially if you're just using the exploits in the hack shop. So we will need a shell and we can't uh, get the shell uh, by running something uh, on like, like we're running an exploit on our own machine. We want the shell for a, another machine. And that is where the remote use comes in. Uh, remote use enables us to run the exploit from our uh, computer uh, and uh, gain access to somebody else's computer. Um, like that's priority one. If we don't have access to the other computer, then we can't really use any of the uh, local use exploits. And that pretty much removes, I don't know, 75% of all the exploits because uh, in my experience, a uh, little over half uh, of them are usually local use. Next up, we will uh, either try to get a shell like this one gives. This one gives a shell. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. 
This one gives root access straight away. So this is like a shell web, but it gives root access straight away. So this is pretty good. Uh, it does have some requirements though. So let's see here, just to make it clear. Get access to shell. That is um, uh, when the terminal changes color and you are now connected to another computer. So we really like that. Remote use means that we can run it from our computer and attack another computer. Credentials obtained, root, means that the kind of the access level we will get is root access. Uh, and below root access is user access and then below that is guest access. And uh, so this will give you full access to the entire computer. And then we have the target, it says leave HTTP, which means that it's an HTTP server. And uh, you can also see the version. And uh, we will later use Nmap to check if uh, this exploit can be used. Uh, required. So there are some requirements connected with this. Uh, existing active connection in the machine. Now this one is uh, pretty good because since it's an HTTP server, we can uh, connect to the HTTP server with the web browser. Uh, and that will count as a active connection. So that one is easy. Then we have minimum number of three users registered in the computer. That could be random. Sometimes there are, sometimes they're not. So that's up to luck, I guess. And uh, we also need a root user logged in uh, to the computer. And that could be trickier. So we would have to have, I guess, an admin would work. So if there's like an admin. Uh, who is also logged in as root, then the exploit will work. And you also have uh, a requirement that the net uh, library uh, on the server needs to be version 1.0.0. I think this part is bugged at the moment because they always say uh, the dependencies on library requirements always say version 1.0.0 and they rarely, if ever, are. So I believe that this exploit is not going to work just because of that. Otherwise, it's a great exploit. I hope you get like an idea of what I'm looking for and what uh, are like good stuff and bad stuff. Let's see if we can find some other remote use that look interesting. Um. We had some other up here, I believe. Very much local use. So these are interesting. Um, grants access to the computer connected to the router in a specified address and search all the bank credential files in the computer to decipher all passwords. So this is great. Um, for us starting out because we need money and this is uh, essentially free money if you find if you like uh, if all, you meet all the requirements it's necessary to have the decipher program installed and uh, it's used for remote use and it give a, gives us guest credentials and uh, the kernel router version needs to be um, equal to or more than 1.4.6 so I really like this one I think we're gonna uh, try this one uh, let's rename it to something that we uh, know what it so we know what it is let's say bank router and then dot src uh, since it's a source code we're downloading Oh, okay. So the, the uh, hack shop is updated, uh, I think it's fairly frequently. And so while we were looking at these, uh, that exploit that was removed. Let's re-update uh, the uh, hack shop and see if we can find something similar. Here we have uh, connect to the same local network okay so that's not as good that's a password file 
We found such a great exploit there, and... Yeah, that was sad. Let's see if we can find something... ...similar. Wow. Here we have something. Yeah, this is just, this is pretty much the same thing. Grants access to the computer connected to the router. And we need the decipher program and remote use and guest and all that good stuff. So let's do bank router dot s t wait s r c there we go and now we have the source code downloaded so um, like there are there are more things that we could check out in the hack shop but for now uh, you have like a basic idea and we need to get uh, some hacking done in this video as well so uh, I will go into my folder and as you can see here we have the bank router uh, file and it's a text file with the source code for the exploit so you can like read the source code and try to learn something figure out how it all works um, what we want to do is we want to run this one uh, in the uh, code editor so we open the code editor and we go into open and we select the source file and it loads it into the uh, code editor and as you can see it looks a bit like it's easier to read code um, but that's not why we did it we uh, did it so that we can compile it into a, uh, a script that we can run so we uh, name it bank router but without the dot src uh, so that uh, because it's like it's an executable script instead of a source file there we go now we save that and let's see here if we can I believe it was like 1.4.6 or something, right? Uh, yeah, so 1.4.6 uh, is the requirement for this exploit. So let's see if we can, if we have some luck with this. So, I guess we'll open another hack shop and we'll pick a mission. This one, for example. This is just to get a IP that we can hack and get the bank credentials off. Let's see if we are lucky with the library version. This is the correct one. So what we will do now maybe we should get like end map we all yeah we have we have end map so we can end map this and see what it is we have a few different uh, we have two different computers the 0 0.3 and the 0 0.2 and then a few different ports and what we will do is we will use the bank router and i'll just run it to see how it's used uh, it's used uh, by just putting the IP address since we are connecting to the router. Let's do IP address and now we get a prompt to enter a LAN address. This is so that we can select which of these computers we want to hack. Uh, let's go with the, we can start with the 0 0.2. Also, you know, uh, I believe that the version was correct since the exploit seems to work. Uh, but we'll see. So we'll try this one. And it's working. 
Uh, it seems like I also put the cipher in there, didn't I? Let's see here. Yeah, we have the cipher as well. So uh, that was one of the requirements. We need to download uh, the cipher in order to run this. And another requirement would be to have uh, the crypto library uh, in order to run the decipher uh, tool. That's a new limitation that was added. Uh, also, like I mentioned earlier, we could not have uh, used this exploit unless we had meta exploit in the library. So uh, the crypto and the meta exploit are needed to do what we're doing right now, as well as Wow, there's a lot of bank passwords. Um, as well as uh, uh, having the decipher tool uh, on your computer. This is going to take a while. I don't know how many users there are on this computer, but uh, the more the better, right? So we will be getting some money from this. Um, Let's prepare, I guess. So we go to bank. Oops, that's not where you search for it. Down here. Pick a bank. Then copy a bank account. There we go. It's very nice. We have the bank account and the bank password. Uh, and that's this user and then so there were like two users and this is the second user and their bank account and their password so What we can do now. Let's see if that was copied. Yes, it was What we can do now is Get this Stuff there We also need the password And there's some money. It's actually a huge amount of money. 33,000. So I think we're set. That was uh, luck. So we'll take it. 33k. Wow. I was worried we would have problems. Funny problems, but I guess not. And uh, let's see if the other one is... Also filled with money. There we go. Oh, almost 10k. I think that's decent. Um, yep. Now we have a lot of money. So I guess that part is taken care of. Um, in the next episode. We will be using the money, I guess. We can explore the, the exploits more. Maybe I will update the computer. Maybe I'll do that in between since I already made a video about that. Regardless, uh, this is how I would recommend you start out. You find an exploit that uh, will most likely work without too many um, requirements and then you Get yourself some money so that you can buy more exploits and play around with the system some more. I hope you liked the video and I'll see you guys in the next episode.